Crimson Trace announces LINK, the world's first wireless laser and white light system, combining a green laser and 300 lumen light with instinctive activation for AR-type rifles. LINK, smart, simple, secure. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, Tom is talking about the newest season of Gun Talk's self-defense series, First Person Defender. Find out what defensive situations audience members ask for the most and how you can participate in the current season. Plus, the National Shooting Sports Foundation's Project Child Safe Gun Safety Program turns 20. What all gun owners can do to help spread the word. And as always, call us at 866-TALK-GUN with your comments, questions, and range reports. And now, here's Tom. All righty, we are back. Well, we just weren't gone for very long, truth be known. A week hardly seems like any time at all when you talk about guns, because we just talk about guns the whole week long. Guns and shooting and collecting and... By the way, I'm Tom Gresham. The show here is known as Gun Talk because that's what we do. We're coming up on 25 years of doing this. Amazing. I gave it 13 weeks, maybe 6 to 13 weeks when we started. <laughs> so far, so good. Having fun. Talking about guns. Uh, people stumble upon this and go, what do you mean, Gun Talk? Well, we talk about pretty much every legal and responsible use of firearms. And that can be collecting. Hunting, of course, recreational shooting, which would be informal or competition shooting, certainly, and absolutely having guns for self-protection, for personal protection, which traditionally over the last 50 years or more has always been the number one reason that people give why they own firearms. Now, they may own guns for a lot of different reasons. They may be hunters, they may be competitive shooters, whatever. But in the list of reasons why people say they own guns, the number one reason is always personal protection. Why is that? Huh. Well, because they've got it figured out. Those who choose not to live in a bubble, who choose not to live in a fantasy world, who choose not to delude themselves into thinking, if I just think good thoughts, then others will think good thoughts all as well. If I do good things, others will do good things. If I, if I don't hurt anyone, then no one will hurt me. Yeah, no, really, there's a lot of evil walking around. There are people who would hurt you and give it as much thought as stepping on an ant. They just don't care. There are sociopaths. There are psychopaths. There are truly crazy people. There are truly evil people. There are alpha predators who are good at hurting people because they've been doing it their entire lives. And they don't care about you. And they don't care that you have children. And they don't care that you have you know, older parents that you have to take care of. And they don't care that you've done nothing wrong. They'll just hurt you. They'll rob you. They'll beat you. They'll hit you. They'll stab you. They'll shoot you. And giving it hardly a thought at all. It's just a thing. Just, it's just something they have to do to get whatever it is they want. And so a lot of people have kind of looked at that and gone, well, hmm, the courts keep ruling that the police have no legal duty to protect anyone. Allow me to say that again. The courts keep ruling that the police have no legal duty to protect anyone. That is, they cannot be held responsible if they don't. That is only you had the responsibility to take care of you and your family. No one else, no one else out there has a legal or moral responsibility to take care of you or your family. You do, however, if you are a responsible adult. And I've had people say, well, Tom, surely you're not saying that if you don't have a gun for self-protection, you're being irresponsible. That's exactly what I'm telling you. And I, yeah, I get it. It's a personal choice and you can do whatever you want. Okay, but I personally think it is irresponsible to not have a means of protecting your family. I think it's irresponsible to not have fire extinguishers, multiple, in your home and have everyone know how to use them. I think it's irresponsible to not use seatbelts. 
I think it's irresponsible to drive and text. And I just as much think it's irresponsible to not have a means of protection for yourself and your family. And having the means of protection doesn't mean just getting a gun. It means knowing what to do with it. And the only way, I'm going to emphasize that, the only way to know that is to get formal training. Not your buddy took you out and showed you how to shoot and you shot, you hit the target most of the time. I'm talking about how to shoot and move, how to shoot and communicate, how to do reloads, how to do malfunction drills. Oh, that's a lot of work. Mm, Yeah, it's kind of fun too. In fact, it's a lot of fun. In fact, it's life-changing. There's nothing that feels quite as good as the confidence that comes from competence. Confidence based on nothing is just fooling yourself. But when you have confidence based on competence, you actually are good and you know it. That's a good feeling. And then when you apply that to being able to take care of yourself and your family, that's a really good feeling. And no, 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 no. You don't end up going looking for trouble. You actually go out of your way to avoid trouble because the more training you get, the less you want to be involved in anything like that. Because you have a real appreciation for how bad it can be. And frankly, that even though you have a gun and even though you have training, that doesn't mean you're going to come out on the good side of a situation. So you want to avoid the situations. Okay? Fair enough. So that's the deal. We have so much coming up uh, on the show today. A lot of things to talk about. But also, we want to take some of your calls uh, right now. Uh, give us a call, 866-TALK-GUN. Let's see, we have a, an important consumer alert, a recall, a, a very popular 22 rifle. Do not shoot it. Uh, we will give you that information. I mean, literally do not shoot it after you hear this information. Uh, we also, it's Father's Day. And looking for your stories. Your dad taking you out shooting, your dad taking you out hunting, how you got introduced to it. The, any kind of gun lessons or stories you'd like to share about your father, now is the time. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. Tactical professionals who put their lives on the line every day depend on Surefire. Since 1979, Surefire has designed, machined, and assembled the finest flashlights and weapon-mounted lights right here in the U.S. From everyday carry flashlights with 1,200 lumens and mil-spec hard anodized finishes to the most reliable weapon lights on the market for duty use or your home defense firearm, Surefire has what you need. American built, American strong. Visit Surefire.com. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Whether you carry it on your hip or in your hands, when it's from Springfield Armory, your gun is a part of the legendary line, the great 1911 pistols, the innovative XD, XDM, and XDS pistols for competition and defense, the new 911 carry pistol, guns you can count on, shooters everywhere rave about the same pistols and rifles, and of course, the mighty M1A battle rifle. Check out the latest at springfield-armory.com. 
For 25 years, Crimson Trace has led the industry in laser and light technology and customer service. Now, Crimson Trace is proud to offer electronic sights and rifle scopes for tactical, target, and hunting applications with the same Crimson Trace offer of free batteries for life on all products. The new rifle scope line is also backed by an unconditional lifetime warranty from the brand that you have trusted for over two decades. Find out more at CrimsonTrace.com. All right, first of all, I mentioned that there's a safety alert, a recall, if you will, a, uh, on the Smith & Wesson M&P 1522. That is their AR-1522 rimfire rifle. Consumer alert says, stop using your M&P 15-22 until it has been inspected and your bolt replaced if necessary. From what I can understand from this, on a very few uh, situations, it's possible for the thing to go full auto on you. So uh, go to the Smith & Wesson website. It's got the information on the recall on this product safety alert. If you have a Smith & Wesson M&P 15-22, again, that is the, I think they have a pistol version as well. Rifle or pistol, it's basically their AR-22 rimfire version. Don't shoot it until you get this checked out. Okay, safety item. All right, line three. David's with us out of Dallas, Texas. Hello, David. Thank you for your patience. How can I help you? Tom, I have two quick questions. Sure. Uh, dealing with SBRs and suppressors. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking at building a SBR 10 and a half inch, and I understand I needed ATF Form One approval. So, okay. My first, my first question is, which stamp is required, and do I need an NSF plus? But before you answer, let me throw in the second one to muddy okay. the water. If I <laughs> okay. want to add a suppressor to the SBR, I believe mm-hmm. I need an NSF trust and stamp. Yeah. I already have an NSF stamp and a suppressor in process. Am right, I required back to have a let, trust? All right, let, 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 me, let me back up because I think uh, there may be a little bit of confusion here. You do not have to have a trust at all to do this. Okay. You understand you can just do this as an individual. You don't do not have to set up a trust. There are some reasons why you might want to set up a trust. So the trust owns your SBR and your suppressor. Uh, that way you could add other people to the trust. And if something happened to you, they still exist in the trust. And there's no inheritance involved in all of that. There's some issues there, some benefits. But that's completely optional. You can buy these as individuals, and you will need a separate stamp for the SBR and for the suppressor, $200 per each. Um, but that's kind of the, that, that's really all there is to it. It's just you got to have the stamp, you got to have the paperwork on each one. Different, you know, have to fill out a separate form for each one, get those in. And you can either do that through a trust or not, but that doesn't really affect uh, your ownership of it or how you go about getting the uh, the paperwork. Does that help? What if I want to pin the suppressor? Is the stamp cheaper? (sighs) I thought there was a thirty-four cent stamp. I'm maybe mistaken. Possibly, if you made the suppressor permanent, basically making the barrel longer, but we now have just exceeded my very shallow knowledge of NFA items, and uh, I do not want you to depend upon me, because depending upon me could end up getting you in trouble with the feds. So I would uh, go a little bit further. Actually, you can check with ATF. They're pretty good about answering questions like that. Um, you know, it's, it really is okay to check with them on things like that. Uh, you know, basically what you're asking is if you made, what would happen is if you pinned the suppressor on, you made the barrel longer than the minimum 16 inches. Now you don't have, it's not an SBR anymore because the barrel is permanently on there. I don't know for sure. I understand where you're going with that, but I would certainly check that out. And you know what? If you've got a, um, a Class 3 dealer or a gunsmith who works on those things, you might just ask there and start at that, that process. But, you know, you understand that I think, I want to say the waiting time is like close to a year now 
for those. So, you know, you just do it and, and you don't think about it. You put in your paperwork and wait, and then, you know, eventually it'll come in. I hope that helps, David. I appreciate the call, sir. Let me go talk to uh, Justin. He is in Arnold, Missouri, line four. Hello, Justin. How are you, sir? Hey, Tom. Pretty good. Uh, first of all, happy good. Father's Day. And uh, it is my father's fault uh, for my passion. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, that's good news. Oh, that's very good news. Bad for my checkbook, but it's very good news. Um, so I definitely want to put a shout out to uh, my father for that. So, um, but I was calling about I've I've been carrying the Sig P365 for about six seven months. Great little mm-hmm. gun, um, you know, it's so small, and I got big, uh, you know, pretty big bear paws on me. I put the the whole grip sleeve adapter on, and kind of fill my that little meat pocket I have in my hand. Um, mm-hmm. But just for added controllability, I've really looked into you know, possibly porting the gun. And, okay. you know, I've looked at Magnaport. I don't really know who else would do it that I could really, that does a good job. But, you know, it when you're really looking at porting a gun that's not reported, that's a fair amount of investment. So, you know, would I really gain that much if I had such a small firearm ported? You know, is it, is it worth, just basically is it worth investment? Well, you know, the whole, the wor- is it worth it is, uh, that's an individual thing, but I can just tell you, it's a lot of work. It will cost you some money. The return on that will be a little bit of uh, benefit in reduced muzzle rise. But I have a question for you. Are, are you using the 12-round magazines? Yes, I carry with the flush 10-round, and my backup is 12. Um, I do. I practice with both um, at my local gun range when we do our once a month running and gunning type of stuff, mm-hmm. uh, different scenarios. I make sure to I'm always either starting flush and then going to my backup. You know, we're you know we're moving and shooting uh, mag changes, different scenarios. Um, so I'm I'm definitely utilizing both you know magazines. All right, and, qu- uh, question I'm, for you. Qu- question for you though. All right, because, I mean, yeah. I've been carrying a 360, you know, I, I carry different guns, but I've carried a 365 a fair amount. And I, what I found was that there was no difference in my ability to conceal it with a 10-round versus a 12-round. So I have just basically, I haven't put a 12, a 10-rounder in the mag, in the gun for six months. I just find that it's easy, easy enough to do the concealment with a 12-round, and the difference in being able to control recoil is huge for me. Oh, it, it, it definitely does help, but when I go out shooting, it's usually 200-plus rounds. Okay. So, you know, it could be three, 400 rounds in a day. And, and, okay, and I'm, micro- I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's I a mean, lot of shooting with a little gun. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I, I used the 365 for a gun sight class, and, you know, I could use it for a day, but the next day I had to go to a different pistol because that's just an awful lot of shooting with a little gun that's kind of snappy yeah. with 9 millimeter. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Let's see. How can, I, how can I say this? Patience, Grasshopper. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You didn't hear, I didn't say anything, did I? No, but I, I understand. I... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just shoot your gun, enjoy your gun, and, you know, who knows? Who knows what might happen? Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Okay. Well, I greatly appreciate it, and I'll, put some, <laughs> you know, I'll try and put a few more thousand rounds through it and see how I do, and maybe I just get you know more gooder with it, right? Tell me a story. How did your dad get you started in guns? Well, uh, we actually started shooting trap when I was a at a fairly young age. Um, it was uh, my 13th or 14th birthday. Come out to the dining room table, and there's a birthday mm-hmm. cake with Elmer Fudd on it. And then um, sitting in his lap was a Remington Express 870. And that's where it all started. Uh, we used to go out to the Olin uh, Gun Club. There in Alton, Ooh. Illinois, and sure. uh, they used to shoot trap there on the industrial league. There was a high school mm-hmm. team uh, that we had built through uh, Jersey County High School, and uh, and that's that's just where it all started. That and deer hunting and squirrel hunting here and there a little bit, but mostly I grew up on the trap fields. And as I became an adult, I got more and more into self defense and pistols. And now that I've recently moved to Missouri, I'm getting deeper and deeper into rifles. And uh, mm-hmm. so 
I should have got a lot bigger gun safe. <laughs> so, but yeah, it, it, like the it rest of us, all started with an old school uh, 870, and uh, that's pretty cool. It, it's it's grown big time. Yeah, I have shot at that uh, Olin Gun Club up there, uh, not too far from Nilo. So pretty cool. I appreciate the story. Thank you, and happy Father's Day to you, sir. You too. Thank you. All right. It's funny he mentions uh, trap shooting. My dad decided to get into trap shooting. I was probably, I don't know, 10, 11, something like that. And he figured out that uh, young boys need to be occupied, and they're also a form of slave labor. And I didn't know for quite a while that I was actually being used because he taught me how to reload his shotgun shell ammo for him. And I'm in the little uh, loading room and I'm cranking out ammo just like a little, you know, munchkin down there, cranking this stuff out, pulling this handle. And we're making hundreds and hundreds of rounds on an old CH uh, press. Man, it was, uh, we're talking slow paper hulls, paper, uh, cardboard wads, if you go that far back. And just making ammo. And after he had been shooting trap for about three or four months, not years, months, he and several of his buddies in Louisiana, we all went up, took the families, went up to the Grand American Trap Shoot in Vandalia, Ohio. It's the granddaddy of all of them. And I remember as a kid, I remember, we're talking, I don't know, probably roughly 10 years old, ballpark, as I remember, seeing Roy Rogers, yes, the movie star, singer, uh, shooting trap at the Grand American. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. But yes, I uh, got started uh, in reloading, making ammo for Dad. I didn't get to shoot any of the ammo. I didn't even know that was part of the deal. Is it, I just thought, well, that's kind of, you know, that's one of your chores. You get to make ammo. So <laughs> we did. But yeah, paper hulls and uh, cardboard wads. What was the name of the? It wasn't Alcan. May have been Alcan. Whoever made those uh, cardboard wads it was pretty cool. And of course, they always smell so good when you shot them. There's a certain smell to a paper hull and cardboard wad. What are the stories that uh, about you shooting with your dad, hunting with your dad, or the guns that you may have gotten passed down from your father? It's Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. We appreciate all the dads. Eight six six Talk Gun. We'll be right back with stories about self-defense with firearms. Good morning, Mr. Gresham. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to host a radio show that will bring truth and common sense to the discussion of firearms rights in this country. Good luck, Tom, to you and your Tom Gresham's Gun Talk team. Welcome back. Tom Gresham here, 866-TALK-GUN, or just dial uh, Tom Talk Gun. It's easy. Tom Talk Gun. By the way, we're doing our uh, June giveaway, Springfield Armory. We're doing one grand prize winner is going to receive a Springfield St. Victor rifle in 308. MSRP is $1,399. Yeah, that's $1,399. bucks. 7.8 pounds for a 308 semi auto. Pretty cool. Go to guntalk.com slash win for a chance on that. Oh, 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 yes. And also at our shop, guntalk.com website. We've got all kinds of shirts and hats and neat stuff there. We're having a 30% off Father's Day sale. That's going to end tomorrow, Monday. Uh, you need to use this code 30 off. It's 30OFF, 30 off. Go to gu- shopguntalk.com. Take a look at what we've got over there. Speaking of gun talk and all the different things that we do, you know, we've got uh, the Guns and Gear television show. We've got Gun Talk Radio. We have a lot of videos. We have the Gun Dealio app. And one of the things that we have that has uh, been really rewarding to do, honestly, is the first person defender series. It's an online series. And we're about to kick off yet another season. And joining me to talk about that, Kevin Jarnigan from our office. KJ, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Tom. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Same to you, sir. <laughs> so what um, what season is this that we're entering? It's just kind of a blur. This is season seven already. And it's, this one is a pretty special one. All right, first of all, for those who don't know, explain what the First Person Defender series is. Well, it it really takes um, the concealed carry nation, and it takes regular people and places them in real-life situations. We we simulate as close as we can 
a real life scenario that, you know, every day people find themselves in and see how they react. And we're using simunitions, uh, which is the, the like, it's like paintball on steroids. It, it hurts like the devil. In fact, I have seen you on more than one occasion having uh, skin broken by you. You end up getting shot more than anybody I know on this show. I do. I, I find myself just, I, I guess I have a very shootable face. <laughs> but no, hi, it, it, it's actually, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, as uh, typically, I'll play the bad guy, but mm -hmm. it, boy, it those things hurt. But but you don't want to get yeah. shot with them. I mean, and that's the goal. And you know, the goal is walking away, um, and especially learning uh, from the scenario. Well, and that's what we try to and, do. And you, so we'll and, bring in trainers. And you watch the learning. You can watch the learning happen. We put people through a scenario. Then, you know, they do what they do. They react to it. And some do pretty well. Some just completely blow it. Then we give them a little bit of training, not very much. And then they try something again. It's pretty similar, not exactly the same, so they can't quite game it. But it is amazing, isn't it, how much people improve in just a short period of time. Boy, it really is. And, and I think it's all about the thought process and getting into the mindset. And You know, once they realize that, okay, this really isn't a game, I think then they start to think logically mm -hmm. and think through their scenarios. And much like we want people to do in the real world, we want them. To, we want them to learn. We want them to think about these scenarios because it's not, you know, every scenario is not like standing on a square range. You're not just gonna, you know, have your gun out in time, ready to go. I mean, there's a lot of factors going on. We hear from people all the time who say, you know, I learned a lot watching this, or I've changed the way I do things watching this, or occasionally we get the. I think maybe watching First Person Defender may have saved my life or saved my children in this case. And those are the ones you really like to hear from. Oh, my goodness, yes. we And I was going reading the comments that the ones we just posted, the one we just posted about the grocery store, and you really want people to react, and that's what we want our audience to, to see. We want them to see mm -hmm. it and go, oh, my gosh, I, I go to the grocery store, you know, 100 times a week. You know, and I find myself like, <laughs> who do I need to watch out for? And, you know, and, and yeah. especially after what would I do in these? this situation? And, and yeah, you get the whole exactly. in tot deal. I never thought of that. I wouldn't have thought of that. I would. I never have reacted that way. And then they go, Oh, I see what you did here. And then it's kind of like, Oh, the thought process st starts cranking up. That's right. That's right. And we've got, you know, and honestly, we we produce these things, and we 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 have so much dedicated to them. That you know, there's little things, very little things that that the audience members are responding to while watching these. So they can go on there, they can, you know, go to the YouTube page and and find these, and they can respond. And a guy just called out, "Hey, at 7:25, you need to really watch that trigger finger." And that's something that on set you're looking at, and, mm -hmm. and we don't know, we don't see it until after the fact, and then you know our you're, audience, you're in the middle of it. They're thinking, yeah, you're in the yep, middle of thinking. it, and, and that's you go back and go. Oh wow! I really didn't have trigger discipline. I really did, you know, have my trigger on the finger, on my finger on the trigger when I didn't mean to. That kind of thing. It's so educational. Uh, KJ, where can people see First Person Offender? Oh, they they just need to go to YouTube. Um, or we got GunTalk.com. They can view them through there as well. But go over to YouTube, search First Person Offender, and it'll take you right to it. We've got seven seasons of. I mean, it's, it's complete action. And we got uh, we got men involved, we got women involved. Sometimes we end up putting families involved. Uh, we try them out. Here's the other thing, and I know that you know as you're looking forward, you know, looking toward doing some more scenarios, and we film more of them. You still need yeah. people involved, and so people who think, you know, I'd like to get involved in that, that they can do that. Yeah, they can absolutely do that. You can just reach out. Uh, uh, you know, uh, just reach out to the Gun Talk team, and they'll have all the everything on the website but really we we need people to want to participate and learn you know this isn't this isn't a class and i think i hear that most of all like when can i when are you guys giving this class this is not a class uh right. this is a it's an educational opportunity um and you need to look at it as such well you know the other thing that we get from people say man and now that I, especially the ones who've been through it they say, I'm going to go get real force-on-force -force training because it's just completely different from anything else you can get. 
Oh, absolutely. Well, and, and this season, you know, this, you know, this, this first batch of four that we're letting out slowly, you know, these folks take these classes, these t- people teach, um, and, and they're very good trainers. Um, we've, I've seen them all shoot and they're great shots and they're great teachers, but you would be surprised in some of these episodes, what good training can do. You can also be surprised. Of, we're always surprised at what's going to happen, especially when KJ's the bad guy, and you get the infamous crotch shot. Oh, oh, yeah, folks! This season, need to watch out. There is a uh, there is a close <laughs> encounter of the ammunition's kind. There's a, somebody on the ground and uh, looking up at KJ and takes the only shot available, which is a straight up shot. Yes, it's straight Ooh. up, and that and and we were using blanks at that time. Thank thank, thank goodness we were using blanks. Goodness. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because because that was the uh, first and last and, time that I will not wear protective gear. <laughs> and every guy we've shown the clip to all goes, "Oh no!" <laughs> yeah, that's the exact that's the exact reaction. They go, "Oh my gosh!" Let me see it again. <laughs> All right, KJ, uh, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, all the new uh, segments of uh, FPD are going to be, we're going to be releasing them as we go along here. But if you want to get involved, shoot a, an email to uh, info at guntalk.com, and that'll get you there, and we appreciate that. KJ, thank you so much. Always a pleasure working with you on these shoots, and uh, you're doing a great thank job, you. man. All right, I appreciate all right, you guys. Have a good day. All right, take care. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. We are open lines now. If there's a gun that you want to know about, something you want to tell me about, absolutely, uh, or if you want to share a story about your dad, hunting, shooting, gun collecting, cool gun, anything else, now's the time to talk about your father because it is Father's Day. 866-TALK-GUN. A perfect pistol for self-protection? Smith & Wesson's m and 2.0 Compact. Big enough to shoot easily, small enough to carry daily. Plenty of ammo to get the job done with 15 rounds of 9mm. Also available in 40 and 45 calibers. All the great m and 2.0 enhanced features, now in a compact size for carry and home protection. Check it out at smith-wesson.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. Tired of searching the web for the best deals on guns, ammunition, and gear? Download the free Gun Dealio app today for deals and discounts right at your fingertips. Handguns, rifles, shotguns, ammo, optics, lasers, gun safes, targets, gun cleaners, grips, slings, and much, much more. Save money on products you want from the companies you love. New deals, discounts, and rebates added daily. Gun Dealio, available for free in the App Store and Google Play. Since 1902, Norma has built a reputation for its dedication to quality, precision, and reliability. Norma now offers a line of personal defense handgun ammunition. The monolithic hollow point 9mm is designed for the ultimate in performance across all sizes and barrel lengths. This bullet delivers unprecedented expansion and quick energy transfer for great stopping power. Norma offers proven ammunition for hunting, competition, self-defense, and more. Find yours at norma-ammunition.com. Well, this is disheartening, not surprising, but disheartening to see. The Virginia Beach shooting, where the city public utilities engineer, uh, former, he had worked there for nine years, used a uh, pistol, killed 12 people. That was on May 31st, on May 30th, the day before. The day before. One of his victims... One of the women that he killed had a conversation 
with her husband, saying that she thinks maybe she should take a pistol to work because she was afraid of this very man. So on the night of May 30th, Kate Nixon talked to her husband and she said, you know, maybe I should take my pistol, take it in my handbag, but she decided not to because, of course, there's a city policy that prevents employees from bringing weapons to work. If Kate Nixon had had her pistol with her, would she have been able to stop this guy? I don't know. Nobody knows. We know that without it, you have no chance. We know that the policy of requiring employees to leave their guns at home and not have them at work and not have any way to protect themselves resulted in 12 deaths. Could she have stopped him? I don't know. Would she have had a chance? Absolutely. But she decided not to. It reminds us, those of us who have been around a while, of the story of Luby's Cafeteria. Susana Gracia Hupp is in the restaurant with her parents in Colleen, Texas. She has her pistol with her in the car, but she leaves it in the car because at that time Texas did not have a concealed permit system. She did not want to lose her medical license, which could have happened if she got caught with an illegal gun. So she left her pistol in her car when a man drove into the restaurant, through the window, got out and started shooting people. And she watched him murder her parents in front of her. And she said, you know, I was thinking, I, I've got this guy. She was hiding I'm just going to get reach in my purse, get my pistol. I'm just going to shoot this guy. I've got him. And then she said she reached in her purse and realized she had left it in the truck. More people killed in gun-free zones. Let's talk with Kenny out of Yucca, Arizona on line one. Hello, Kenny. You're on Gun Talk. Hi, Tom. Um, I've got good news coming out of uh, Needles, California, 20 miles down or 30 miles down the road, right on the Colorado River from where I live. Okay. Okay. I live in Arizona, and it's a, you know, it's a carry state. You can carry open or, right. or concealed. And in California, you can't. So if you want to go to Needles to partake in, in, in the economy, you have to undress before you go there. So what are they doing? The city council has voted to become a sanctuary city for open carry, open and or concealed carry. Really? They're, uh, they've still got some uh, hurdles to come through with the state legislature, I guess. They, they don't seem to have a problem with the legislature when they want a sanctuary city to protect the illegals. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. The legislature will have a, a conniption fit over this thing, and they will put the kibosh on it. But at the same time, it is a fabulous statement for Needles, California, to make, which is, we don't care what you're going to do in Sacramento. We're going to allow people to take care of themselves. It, it, this is the great follow-on to that story I just had of two different women who didn't take their guns with them into gun-free zones and one watched her parents murdered in front of her, and the other was actually murdered about two weeks ago in uh, Virginia Beach. Gun-free zones result in people getting killed. It prevents people from protecting themselves. It really is as simple as that. 6,000 times a day in the U.S. 6,000 times a day, people use guns to protect themselves, to stop crime. Guns save lives. 866-TALK-GUN. This is Gun Talk. All right, back with you. 866-TALK-GUN. Get you in here. Ah, a lot of stories going on. We'll, uh, we'll get to that. I was turned the break there. I actually went online. Made a, a donation to Knife Rights. The Knife Rights, uh, Doug Ritter called me. He said, hey, we need some help real fast. Uh, we've got a chance to put a lobbyist in to do some good work here, but I need a thousand bucks. 
And I said, well, let me see what I can do. And I threw a link up on Twitter. Uh, and so let me just mention that right here because they need some help pretty quickly. I mean, if 10 bucks helps. I mean, if you got $10 you can throw into the pot, it would really help. Just go to KnifeRights.org, O-R-G, uh, KnifeRights.org. Knife Rights, of course, fighting for the Second Amendment with knives because knives are part of the Second Amendment. Every time they can push back on that, it helps the Second Amendment as well. So if you can help out, by all means, please do. I just threw some at him during the break there. Hey, you got to do something with two minutes, right? <laughs> all right, let's see. Line four, John's in Grand Forks, North Dakota. How can we help you, John? Yeah, a little different bend on things. Uh, two days ago, up in our town, in a box store, there was a 911 call to the police that someone is in the store had a gun. And then also, um, the workers at the store were telling people to get out of the building, there's an active shooter. Um, of course, 911, you can imagine what the police showed up with. Uh, it was a belligerent customer, and there was no gun. But Was this, a, was this the Costco? Uh, no, uh, Walmart. Um, Walmart, okay. And, yeah. The, the other Walmart in our town you know, about three years ago did have an active shooter, but, you know, it kind of got all messed up. And... Uh, it could have gotten, you know, we had, I, uh, it got to be Friday was talk radio, uh, let me, let me ask and, you a question because I'm going to run out of time here. Did anybody get okay. shot? No. Well, there's no gun. So nobody, nobody uh, in the store, no, there was no active shooter. There's nobody in the store with a gun. Just somebody was just making noise. Did the police come in and, uh, Oh yeah. Yeah. Get, because uh, they were called that there was a person sure. in the store with a gun. Exceptionally and, dangerous uh, situation. Well, yeah, uh, quickly, uh, two guys called into the talk show, both concealed carry. One, a retired police officer, and he said, the first thing I do is get my family out of there, and the second thing is I will not draw my weapon unless I'm personally in fear of my life. Because they mm-hmm. said, he said, you know, you get the police coming in with that type of a, a call, and you're the oh, yeah. only one that's got your weapon you're, out. You well, said, not, not I only could that. Be in trouble here. So, Do you remember the situation yeah. of the uh, the Walmart shooting, where somebody's shooting in a Walmart, and a concealed carry guy pulls his gun out, and he's making a move on this guy, and the active shooter's girlfriend comes up behind the concealed carry guy, shoots him in the back of the head. Uh, once again, you don't know what the situation is. You're there to mm-hmm. take care of yourself and your family, and I mean, I'm going to get myself against a wall. I'm going to get my family out of there. But, you know, not only can you get shot by the police, you can get shot by another good guy. You can get shot by the wingman, or in this case, the wing woman of the bad guy. They set it up so that she could watch behind him and take out anybody who tried to stop his active shooter deal. So that's where the training comes in. Look, I appreciate the call, sir, because it lets me talk about this. This is what First Person Defender does. We set up these scenarios. We take these scenarios right out of the news, just like this. We actually did one just like this, where we had a wingman. We put people into the situation, and they almost always fail. And then we train, and they go, oh, okay, I get that. I I didn't think about that. And then you go, okay, what could I have done? And as you watch these first-person defender shows that we do, you find them on YouTube. Just look for first-person defender. It's an eye-opener. It's an education. And, yeah, you're not actually going through the scenario, but you're playing it out in your mind, and you're learning stuff all the time. Very worthwhile. Check it out. First Person Defender on YouTube. All right, when we come back, we'll take your calls. We also have guests. 866-TALK-GUN. 866-TALK-GUN. 